When we know how to ask the right questions, data combined with statistical models can answer important questions about happiness, wealth, misery and poverty. This image reveals trends in American wages, and it's surprisingly easy to create with just two lines of code. Let's break it down. In the first line, we'll use the wage dataset from the ISLR package to build the multivariable linear model. This model investigates how wages vary across different job categories, health insurance statuses, education levels, health conditions, marital statuses, and even age. Since age is a continuous variable, we allow for a nonlinear relationship by including it as a second degree polynomial term. The second line of the code uses the model to create a visual representation of how these six factors influence salary. This visualization is typically called a partial dependence plot, where we can see the isolated effect of each variable on wages while holding all others constant. Once we have our model and can see how different factors affect salaries, we can start to ask specific questions. For example, if our goal is to maximize our salary by choosing the best paying profession, we can use a technique called estimated marginal means to compare mean salaries across different job categories. The means function from the means package reveals that IT jobs have an estimated average salary of $117,000 per year, which is $3,000 more than industrial jobs. So, based on this model, the answer to the question what profession brings more money is IT. Similarly, the model can tell us how much health insurance impacts earnings. Namely, people with health insurance tend to earn about 16 k more per year than those without. This is again because we can use the model to estimate salaries specifically for those with and without health insurance while holding all other factors constant. But let's ask even more interesting question. Namely, what would we earn if we have both an IT job and health insurance? The means function comes in handy again. It allows us to specify categories for each predictive variable using the at argument. In this case, we are only interested in people with health insurance. The model predicts that someone working in IT with health insurance can expect to earn an average salary of $124,000 per year. This is $4,000 more than only with health insurance and $7,000 more than only in IT. But what about other predictors? Well, the means function tells us that the results are averaged over the levels of education, health and marital status. This means the model calculates salaries for all categories of this factor separately and takes an average. This averaging occurs because we asked a means only about job classes and health insurances, not about other predictors. But similarly to health insurance, using only the at argument, we can actually ask the model to give us the salary for any category of any predictor to outline any scenario we want. The key question now is, how do we know what questions to ask the model? Here is where the refgrid function comes in handy. It provides a helpful overview by showing all possible levels of the categorical predictors and the average values for the numeric predictors like age. With this information from refgrid, we can revisit our predictions plot and identify the most promising category for each predictor in terms of salary. For example, imagine we ask the model to estimate our wage for someone working in IT with health insurance and holding the highest education degree. According to the model, our salary jumps from 124000 to a whopping $156,000, which is huge and makes total sense. When we factor in very good health and marriage, since these categories are associated with a higher salaries, our predicted income increases to $160,000. Numeric predictors like age require special attention. 
the refgrid function shows us that all the predictions were based on a reference age of 42. But just like with categorical variables, we can explore any age we want. And if we consider the peak of the curve, say 50 years old, we'll reach the best case scenario with a predicted salary of 162 case per year. The model can also help us to explore the other side of the coin, the worst case scenario, which will tell us what might lead to lower earnings. Imagine starting work in a factory for a quick paycheck. Since factories often don't require a high level of education upfront, this might seem appealing. However, this path could also mean staying in a job that doesn't require further education. A lack of education could then limit your ability to afford health insurance, potentially impacting your health. Moreover, poor health and a low education level could make it more challenging to find a partner, as people often look for healthy, intelligent and financially secure partners. What's the result? Well, according to our model, at the same age of 50, where you could be earning over $160,000, you might instead be earning only 68,000, a staggering almost two and a half times less. So while we aren't completely sure that money will make us happy, the data suggests that the absence of money can definitely make you miserable. But I would be interested to know what you think about the link between money and happiness. So let me know in the comments below. Speaking of happiness, could we actually ask the data about how to be happy? and how to avoid misery. Yes, we can. So let's explore another publicly available dataset together and see what we can discover. The latest World Happiness Report is free and provides downloadable links for two key components. The first one is data for Table 2.1. This Excel table contains the core happiness data including the national average happiness score based on people's responses to the question how good is your life on a scale of 0 worst to 10 best and the second is statistical appendix 1 this appendix explains the data in details helping you understand what each metric represents for example wealth refers to the gdp per capita adjusted for purchasing power now, we'll read the Excel table, clean the names and rename some of them, calculate the medians for social support and generosity in order to categorize them, because otherwise we would only have numeric predictors, and finally, we'll remove any rows with missing values to ensure a clean and complete dataset for our analysis. Next, we'll create a multivariable linear model to analyze how happiness is influenced by factors like wealth, social support, life expectancy, and generosity. By visualizing the model's predictions, you can not only identify extreme scenarios, the happiest and least happy situations, but also explore any scenario you want, including the one which reflects your current situation, allowing you to see how adjustments in these factors might impact your own happiness. To construct the best-case scenario, we will integrate the highest values from our individual predictions. This includes a maximum wealth index of 12, which correlates with a happiness score of approximately 7. We will also select the greatest life expectancy around 8 years, associated with a similar happiness score. Lastly, we will factor in the benefits of an active social life and a generous spirit, both of which contribute to the happiness scores of about 5.5. Interestingly, when we combine the highest categories, the overall happiness score elevates to 8.5, surpassing the highest score of individual predictors, which was only 7. This suggests that the best-case scenario for happiness occurs when we are wealthy, enjoy longevity, have supportive family and friends, and engage in acts of generosity which kind of makes sense. And if this video makes sense for you, please give it a thumbs up and consider joining the channel. Now, let's find out how to avoid unhappiness. To build the worst case scenario, we cut our wealth in half to roughly six and observe our happiness score plummet from seven to about four. 
Next, we reduce our life expectancy to 40 years, where our happiness dips below 5. If we opt for grit and solitude, our happiness floats slightly above 5. Interestingly, even though our happiness never fell below 4 for any individual factor, the overall happiness score dropped to 3.4, which is nearly 2.5 times less than the happiness score in the best case scenario. So, it seems like the blueprint for a joyful, successful and fulfilling life involves enhancing our education, embracing a healthy lifestyle, investing in health insurance, nurturing relationships through marriage and friendship, and embodying generosity and kindness. And we only used small publicly available datasets and the basic linear model. So imagine what kind of crazy insights we could unlock with more data and more sophisticated model. In fact, finding the best model you possibly can is absolutely crucial, since the quality of your decisions heavily depends on the quality of your model. Well, the good news is, finding the best model is actually not that hard. And this video here will teach you exactly how to do it.